what what typically happens is your wife takes you out for the talk and that talk is the talk that you have to have the talk with your son and then you have to stress about it for weeks over oh my gosh i can't believe i have to talk about this with the boy uh what do i do uh, i and i listen i am i am no expert but i will tell you how i started it and, and i did some some theological grounding to get there um so so i started out uh make, making a a comparison with jesus like for example this isn't controversial but it doesn't get talked about in the pulpit uh, did did you do you know how Jesus knew he was the Son of God? Um, the answer is he grew in wisdom and understanding. He he didn't come out of the womb knowing he was the Son of God. Uh, Orthodox Christian, and I realize that some of you will find this really controversial, and it's not meant to be. You don't hear it from the pulpit, but go talk to your pastor, and he'll tell you I'm right. Uh, Orthodox Christianity, going all the way back to to the days of Nicaea. Uh, believe that uh, essentially Jesus was fully God and fully human. There was a firewall between the two. Uh, how could Jesus perform miracles in the same way Moses and Elijah and the others through the Holy Spirit? Uh, Jesus could read the Bible without sin and therefore could read the the, uh, the virgin would bear birth to a child and Mary tells Jesus that the angel Gabriel comes to her and, and he can put two and two together. He can read the Bible. He knows it's about him, but he believes it by faith in the same way we do initially. Uh, and, and eventually he gets to the mountain and, and the devil tempts him and says, all of this is yours as he starts his ministry and, and gets on his way out there. And, and so I'm, I'm explaining this to my son that Jesus, at first, he believed himself to be the son of God by faith. Uh, he grew in wisdom and understanding and knew this was to be true as I want my son to grow in wisdom and understanding and know by faith Jesus is God and that he needs to understand he is now getting to an age where he is no longer protected by his mom and me in such a way. And uh, by this time, we're in downtown Macon, and I'm, I'm kind of waving out into the city. And I said, the world's going to tell you all of this is going to be yours if you reject the way your mom and I have raised you, if you reject your belief, if you reject uh, what we've raised you to be true. Uh, even the Bible says that the world is going to tempt you into going with the world, and, and you will have a great life if you do, by and large. If you reject God, the people who do tend to be the successful celebrities of the day. Uh, and it's, to some degree, an act of mercy. This is literally the best they will ever have. It. And for all of eternity, it, it's going to be very bad for them. And you need to accept, do you want the here and now great and eternity bad? Or do you want the here and now okay with Jesus and eternity marvelous? So because the world's going to throw all sorts of temptations in your way to try to lure you away from the way your mom and I have raised you. And then I said, "You do you remember the story about Noah and Noah's family on the ark with him? And of course he did. And I said, do you know why Noah's sons and their wives were allowed on the ark? I said, it was nothing they did. It's not that they loved God. The Bible says that Noah found favor with God. And so his children were allowed safe passage on the ark with him. And then when the ark settled and the waters received, they were kind of on their own and, and they were held to account. I said, this is very much the same way. I can tell you that as a child, because of your mom's and my faith, that if something were to happen to you and you were to die, you were going to go to heaven. But you're reaching the age of your own accountability now. You're reaching the age where you're going to have to make this walk with God yourself. It's not going to be on your mom and me and our faith giving you a pass. You're going to have to own it yourself. And I said, and then this comes to what you're going to experience now as your body is changing. And then we began the conversation and, and I tried to set it up that way because I, I do take those things seriously. And then explain to him that he's reaching the point where hair's going to start growing. He's going to start shaving. His voice is going to deepen. He's going to go through growth spurts. He's going to start having mood swings. He's going to start having changes in his body. Uh, and, and then explain to him along the way that, and as this comes, these new temptations are going to arise, things you haven't experienced before, emotions you haven't experienced before, desires and, and, that you haven't experienced before, uh, they're going to start happening. And they're going to start happening uh, as you become interested in girls and as you start becoming a man and your friends are going to try to pull you in certain directions and you need to know at the outset, here's why these things are wrong. Not the most comfortable conversation to have. Uh, I, I, you know, to some degree, I, I guess I, I feel very special in that our 
our, our son is has lived a a rather naive and sheltered life, and all of this was new to him. He took it all in, did not ask a lot of questions, uh, and then it was also a perfect transition into now that you're headed into uh, seventh grade next year, you also now need to start realizing that what you start doing grade wise is going to affect you. And you, you gotta, you gotta figure this stuff out as well. And I think it all worked out reasonably well in that regard. I hope, uh, I'm, I'm sure there were details I missed. I'm, I'm sure there's something that his mom probably wanted me to throw in that I missed, but I, you know, it's not the easiest conversation. Let me just put it to you that way. Uh, I, so I, that's how I started mine. Your mileage may vary on this stuff. Uh, I, I certainly take those aspects of it serious. And I certainly feel like he, I, you've got to, I've got to emphasize to him that uh, at some point he's got to be accountable for himself. And I think that's a message, by the way, that kind of gets lost to the world today. And, you know, you, you've now got the situation in this country, not, not, to, not to grasp too far out there, but now you can stay on your parents' insurance until you're 25 you can still to some degree be a dependent and things like that. At some point, we've lost the conversation that at, you've got to be held responsible for your own acts. Now, there are people who have hard lives. I know people, I can think of people I've dealt with in my life who had terrible parents from horrible backgrounds, went into lives of crime, and you can say, well, it's not really their fault because look at the the horrible way they were raised, the people they were surrounded with by their parents, the things that happened to them. But ultimately, at some point, we, we as a society have to also accept that we individually are responsible for our outcomes. We individually, as a society, need to accept that things will happen to us and we will engage in behavior that is unacceptable. And you can objectively through just uh, objective. Now, I realize if you're into critical theory, there is no objective standard, but I think there are objective standards of this behavior is bad. And even though you were raised in a terrible situation, even though uh, you, you may have been, you've been product of abuse, maybe your dad was in jail, maybe he was missing, your family was collapsed, you were passed from family to family, you were abused, there are still within you the appreciation recognition that there are some things that are wrong and bad and you should not do. And when you do them, you can't say, well, it was, it was my past, it was my family, it was the way I was raised. You yourself are responsible. And if there's one terrible trend in our society today that we've got, it's this idea that you're not responsible because you're the product of your environment and it was the environment or the class of people you're with this race. Like the, the woman the other day who wrote the story that even when it's the, the black man harassing the Asian woman or, or assaulting her, it's not really his fault, it's white supremacy's fault because the culture in which he was raised, he was oppressed and now he's lashing out at another oppressed class because of the oppressor. That's BS! You got to be held accountable for your own behaviors. You got to be held accountable uh, for what you did. And if I can begin a conversation with my son about growing up and pointing out he is going to be held accountable for his behavior, and he needs to come to terms with who he is, and it, he needs to accept uh, and make a make a conscious decision, uh, whose team is he on? Because you got to decide at some point. And we keep, as a society, putting this off and letting kids grow up later and later and later and later. It's, it's remarkable when you study older times, uh, kids who are 13 and 14 are, are suddenly getting married and having kids. And like, really? Not anymore. We, we allow breathing room, time to grow, time to get educated, time for bodies to fully develop and all of that. Uh, we, we've put things off, and that's not a bad thing at all. But one of the bad things is we allow people to delay accepting that they have responsibilities individually in society and they themselves has responsibilities to decide about their faith. They themselves have responsibilities to grow up and be part of something greater than themselves or choose not to. And that's, that's it. Look, I, I'm no expert. I've only got one kid. That's the only time I will ever have to do that uh, talk, but that's, that's how I went with it. Your mileage may vary.